being a video creator, I'm sure that at some point you finished an edit, graded, and it looked fine, but not special. At that point, you can either spend some hours grading and trying to fine tune it, or you can use the method that I'm about to show you. Making things easier to have a very beautiful filmic look, it's what the Hanser promises, but at a cost. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works, a thing or two about color grading that you're gonna need to know, but mainly the good and bad sides of this plugin so you can decide if it's worth it for your workflow or not. Now, the Hanser isn't just another LUT pack. It kinda simulates all the photochemical process from choosing the negative stock to developing and even what print media you're gonna use. To install it, it's very simple and it's available on all these editing softwares. I'm gonna be using DaVinci Resolve, but mostly what I talk about, the plugin itself is gonna be the same across all the other softwares. In DaVinci, after you install it, it's gonna be available as an effect here. Now you can import the footage you wanna try it with, and I'm just gonna do a very simple node tree here with one node. And I'm just gonna find the hands area on the list and add it to that node. I'm gonna talk about color management next, so if you're already worried about this single node, we'll get there. And I suggest you click on Disable tool so that we can start a grade from scratch. If you get a subscription, you're gonna be able to activate it by clicking License Info and entering your login. Then clicking on Check Profiles, you're gonna be able to download all of the film profiles that are available right now. Very soon you're gonna see that it offers more than 60 different film profiles and many other effects like Bloom, Halation, Gateweave and much more. I'm gonna talk about each one of them while trying to keep this as short as possible. By the way, you can download and try it right now along with me. So let's talk a little bit about color management so that it actually works. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve just like me, there are three main color management ways that you can use the Hanser with. Two of them are gonna give you the same look and one of them a little bit different. First one is using DaVinci YRGB and the color space transforms. In this case, you're gonna need three nodes. Basic structure, color space transform in and out and the Hanser in the middle. Now the first thing you have to tell in the Hanser is what media is it? And a very good way to work is transforming your log footage into DaVinci White Gamut, telling the Hanser it's DaVinci White Gamut, and then transforming DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709. So this means that here in the middle you're going to be working with a very big color space, giving you maximum possibilities. Second method is still using DaVinci White RGB, but then using the Hanser to transform your footage. And you can go inside camera and which profile were you using so that it can transform it for you. Now this method, if you compare with directly using color space transforms, it is gonna give a slightly different look. And lastly, my preferred way of using it with DaVinci YRGB color managed. So here in color processing mode, you can either choose custom and then choose DaVinci White Gamut below, or you can simply use HDR DaVinci White Gamut. And then inside the bin, setting the input color space for whatever log footage you have, like in my case, Sony S-Log3, for example, everything is already converted in the background and you don't need to do anything in the node tree. Just apply the Hanser, say it's DaVinci White Gamut as the color space and go on. Now here I'm applying the plugin on only one clip because this is just an example. But if you're grading a whole project, you could be using it on the timeline node tree or a group node tree or even an adjustment layer above your clips, as you prefer. Now, whatever you do, color correction should come first. So white balance, exposure, you should either use it on a separate node before using the Hanser or even use the tool itself on the input from the Hanser to fix it. These are applied before any effect takes place. So if you want to do it separate, drop the Hanser as the last node. Now inside the Hanser, I'm going to start with the input section. And almost all of the sections are going to have this enable checkbox. So don't be scared if you start moving sliders around and nothing changes. It's probably because you haven't checked that yet. So here you're gonna fine tune all the color correction you need with exposure, contrast, and very important, white balance. And then comes the fun part, film profiles. Here I suggest you take your time to just try out many of them and see which kind of look overall they give. You're gonna be able to change a lot of it and fine tune it as you want, but the main grade is gonna be there. Some that I personally like, for example, are Kodak Vision 350D, 200T or 500T. Now bear in mind that the ones that finish with D are more suitable for daylight film and the one in T for tungsten light. Now, with color correction properly made on your clips, you're probably gonna be able to use only one film profile for all of it. So now you're gonna face the push and pull slider, which is gonna act just like developing a real film. You basically have a single control in which you're gonna be able to see three different exposures on a negative film. So it's gonna affect the color, the contrast, and the clipping on each one of your clips. So here, pay attention to the highlights on your scene, the overall colors you'd like, and the contrast level. Next, film developer is gonna take you inside the darkroom to do it yourself. Pay attention because here the lower sliders are gonna work only if the contrast slider is not on zero. And you can use gamma separation, moving the midtones up or down. Color separation, which is gonna work a little bit like vibrance on Lightroom, in which it's gonna move the colors that are not very saturated first, up and down, and then all the others. So not all equally. 
Color Boost instead moves all the colors together, but without clipping. And here comes one of the highlights of the enhancer. The film compression makes the roll-off of the highlights so subtle and so nice. And it helps you avoid those strong contrasty highlights that really shows that an image is digital. Impact is gonna be how strong the effect is. And white point is gonna bring the limit lower or higher. Meaning the highlights are gonna have more or less space to roll and making it more subtle. So if you go down, it's more contrasty. And here I need you to watch the waveform to understand what's going on. I love to use the parade to see how it compresses when you go up and down. The tonal range is gonna tell you how far the highlights should be considered. From the higher levels to the lower ones or just a small margin. Color density is gonna move the saturation of the compressed area. In this example, it's gonna be mostly the face and the background. And if it feels like the image looks a little bit flat after that, you can use Xpand, which is gonna let you to set manually the white and black points. Testing it, I usually like to use the blacks a little bit above zero and the whites around 95, 96. That's gonna keep a very full range without clipping. Then you've got the print section, and the characteristics of that is gonna change how it looks. The combination between this and film profile are drastically gonna dictate how your video looks like. So I would say that after checking which film profiles you like more, you can start combining them with the print papers and now see which kind of combinations you like more. Here I'm usually between the Kodak 2383 and the Fujifilm, but it's totally up to you. And here you're still gonna be able to tweak tonal contrast, color density, and if you see any of the changes that are clipping a little bit the highlights, you can still use the analog range limiter to stay within true film latitude. Next up, we have color head, which is gonna add the cast to the image, but in a more natural, organic way. It's definitely not the same as just using the white balance, for example, to throw some yellow or something on the image. In this image, for example, I did an experiment. I just added a little bit of yellow, and right after, you can set how much of it you want in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can actually set the cast you wanted, or you can remove and go to the opposite way, making even more color separation than you had before. I felt that a little bit looks good, but I wouldn't go over the board with it. Unless you want a very characteristic look, just like the Martian or Mad Max or something like that. And after everything, you still got the impact slider, so you can tone it down a little bit if you want. Now the finishing touches, but these make a lot of difference. First of all, the Hanser's grain is not just an overlay. The plugin basically rebuilds your image. You can pick from a stronger 8mm look or go up to 65 and the higher the ISO, the stronger it's gonna be. Now you can pick one of the presets or just go custom to pick everything individually. Amount and size are quite intuitive, but the important here is that you can set the amount of grain you want for the shadow, midtones, and highlights. And the default values feel quite strong to me, so somewhere around here is what I usually prefer to use. Any value above zero is gonna generate grain and it's quite responsive. Chroma is gonna add some ISO color cast to your image that feels a little bit digital to me. So I prefer to lower it and just have the monochromatic grain for the texture. Halation adds this glow around the warm tones. And it's definitely gonna affect the skin tone, so you gotta be careful with this one. Now here the same applies. Lower is heavier and higher is a little bit softer. But every no rem jet variation is gonna be stronger than its brother. And also here, custom lets you dig into some extra options. First, the source limiter being at zero means that you're not limiting this image at all. You're gonna have halation everywhere. Every single spot with enough brightness is gonna generate the effect. And Bloom is gonna give you a soft diffusion around the highlights. And now you're gonna be able to see how these two complement each other around the contrasty areas. To me, it makes more sense to use both of them together. I personally feel that 35 mm is a very good starting point. Film damage, film breath, and gate wave. These are all physical effects and damages in the media. Dust, scratches, film exposure, color variation, or even physical movement itself. These are really gonna help if you want a very stylized video, but they are definitely much more distracting, so use it with a lot of care. Overscan is a fantastic way to show the borders of the film with a lot of control. Again, much better than just using some weird overlays on top and having to set the blending mode. Just pick the one you prefer, offset, exposure, scale, and your footage is gonna be framed like this. Now, vignette is a great finishing touch, and if you click mask mode, you're gonna be able to see where the border is right now. You can make it bigger, smaller, and feather it as much as you want. Just pay attention because if you feather it too much, you're gonna impact the overall exposure of the image. So you can make it bigger while still feathered. Like this, you affect only the corners. Now, most of these last tools we talked about, DaVinci's got already a built-in solution for that. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Now, what I love about the answer is that it's gonna make your grading consistent. Every part of it, the negative, the compression, the print, the effects, they all act together, following the same color sign. So you're not just stacking random LUTs on top of your image, it's acting on it. Now, for beginners, it does all the heavy lifting. You have a very good look in a couple of minutes. For professionals, it definitely saves time, and time is money. And not only for video editing, but it's also available on Lightroom and on iOS, with many of the same controls you're gonna be seeing here. 
so it's awesome for a quick turnaround of very cool photos. Now we're not over because there are also some monitoring tools inside this. And these you can even use on a separate node if you wanted, just to be able to activate and deactivate it when you want it. False color is gonna help you check if the exposure is just right. And clipping indication is gonna tell you if there's something below or above the maximum levels. And with output, you can set the total impact of the plugin, but just bear in mind that this is gonna affect all of the boxes before. And since many of them have also the impact slider on each one, you're better off if you just fine tune it individually. And the export LUT is gonna allow you to make a preview of what you're creating here so that you can use an external monitor or in the Monitor Plus app, like I showed you in this video over here, in which you can foresee already when you're filming how it's gonna look like in the end. Now let's have an open talk here because DaVinci actually offers already many of the tools that Dehancer is making you pay for. But trying to recreate the same look I've got on Dehancer using only DaVinci's tools brought me to some discoveries. So let's understand why Dehancer stands out and where it falls short compared to DaVinci Film Look Creator, which by this point is its main competitor because it's already inside the software. Dehancer is gonna get you to a beautiful filmic look within a couple of minutes. You're not stacking a lot of nodes and having to recreate some of the effects by yourself. It's all inside one plugin designed to have perfect chemistry. As I said before, the highlight roll-off with the film compression is amazing and so difficult to replicate just with DaVinci tools. And the amount of film profiles you get, there's not even a comparison. And on top of that, if we talk about the grain, which is actually being rebuilt inside your image and not just overlaid on top of it, we're on a different level here. Now, to be quite honest, the answer is quite heavy on performance, especially if you enable halation and bloom together. Playback can be quite choppy. So you're probably gonna have to activate a quarter playback resolution and or smart rendering. The interface feels a little bit dense, there are so many sliders and it's quite long. But of course, the biggest disadvantage of all is the price tag. It is a lot to drop on a single plugin, even it being so powerful. And don't get me wrong, DaVinci's Film Look Creator is great for quick stylized looks. It gives you some film stocks, halation, it's quite GPU friendly, but it's still more like a digital emulation. It doesn't model the full negative to print pipeline or the chemical-like compression like the answer does. In short, DaVinci's tools are faster for a subtle look. The answer is deeper, more analog, and more customizable, if you want the true cinematic texture. Now what I think, for hobbyists, it might be a little bit too much. But for working filmmakers and anyone who grades regularly, I think it pays itself off pretty quickly. And you get professional client-ready results, fast and with a lot of control. If you're used to building film looks with LUTs, halation, and a lot of curve adjustments, it replaces all of that with a single interface. And if you're just getting started, it helps you understand what it should look like so that you can recreate it, which is actually a great learning tool. If you want to try it out, you can use the link in the description to have 10% off using the code FLYENRY. Now, this plugin definitely made its way inside my own workflow, but I want to hear from you if you think this is worth it or not. If you have any questions about the plugin itself or the video today, just let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to watch another cool video about DaVinci Resolve, you can check out this video over here. Thanks again, and I'll see you over there.